I just got back from Inbound. It was an amazing event, and here's what I took away as my three biggest insights. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. On this episode today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I just came back from Inbound. The conference was amazing, and there's three main takeaways I took. I want to share them with you that can definitely definitely help you as a seller and also help you as a sales leader or help you in the, anyone that's in B2B selling. Now, if this is your first time listening to our podcast, you're going to go ahead and subscribe because we want to notify you every single time we have really amazing content like this one. So I got a chance to watch uh, some of the information from HubSpot. They always share great insights. Um, and what I love about them is the fact that they're steep in data. They're not just sharing theory. These are things that they're seeing from the user information, from surveys, from just their own information they're collecting because initially they were a marketing company and now they're doing everything when it comes towards helping us when it comes to RevOps. But one of the things that I took away, three things, was one, search is dying to some degree. Uh, not, not, not exactly, but I'm going to be a little bit of a clickbaity with that one. Number two, you got to personalize, 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 but we got to do it in a different way and AI could help us. I'm going to share with you what they're doing. And then number three, you got to double down on social. So number one, search. Search is estimated to decrease by 25% by the year 2026. So let me get that one more time for you. Search is projected to decrease by 25% by the year 2026. Now here's the reason why many of you have gone on to Google and you've done the search and you saw what happens. You can get a lot of your information from AI. Why would I go into, uh, go into Google to go search for something when I can do it uh, easily via chat GPT and it can give me more information? I've done this plenty of times, like looking for, for instance, I know my behavior has adjusted in which I might be looking for, uh, I mean, like some things like I'm trying to find a flight, I'm going to use Google right now. But when I'm looking for content things relative to, you know, what can I write or some research, or things of that nature, I'm going to go for the most part or let's say probably about, let's say 50 to 60 percent right now, just to, to be a little conservative. I'm going to chat GPT because it can give me the intel and information on that. And it's also dynamic because I can then tell it, OK, go get me this much or find this for me. An example, a friend of mine, we're at a conference, not this one, another uh, a podcasting conference. We're discussing this topic about some prospects that we can go after, blah, blah, blah. But instead of going to Google and doing hours of search, we did this in ChatGPT in a matter of about four minutes. We had probably maybe a good, uh, probably say a good hour of search stuff, that search that we would have done in Google to find information here and to collect this and bring it all together. Chat did it for us so quickly. So the thing you need to think about with your prospect is that they are going to chat into these other generative AI softwares or solutions to be able to get, or engines, I should say, to get information in a more succinct, effective way than they could on search. So as a company, how can we take advantage of that? Can your organization look for ways to be able to provide more AI capability that's going to help to help your prospects when they're doing searching. That's a whole nother story for another day, but I'll take that, give that to you so you can take it in-house, but just search is decreasing. AI usage is increasing. All right. Number two, personalization is scale. So HubSpot noticed something as well that everyone wants to, no one wants to, I, I just got an email and this email was to me, um, pitch, pitch, uh, sorry, it was an in-mail pitching me on, uh, podcast production services when guys my whole business was created from podcasts and the thing that they were pushing was that they can help us generate leads from the podcast and I'm like guys I created a whole company and I started that genre for goodness sake not exactly but I was one of those original people starting podcasting back in 20, uh, 20, 2012 2013 and that's how we got our leads and that's how we grew our business and some of you watching this are going to become leads for us right now because that's just the way it is so they were pitching me on something that they didn't do any research on. So people like me are getting annoyed by saying they're not doing any research. They're not prepping. They're not coming to the table with anything. Now, this guy thought he probably was doing a good job sending this out. And he thought he personalized because he just wanted to, uh, to LinkedIn and looked up podcasters and figured he can talk about or people, excuse me, he probably looked up coaches on LinkedIn and started reaching out to coaches and trainers 
And that's how he felt that he was personalizing his message. But it's not. We we are, that was like so 1999, maybe 10 years ago. Not that far back. But it, or yeah, it still was like, it's still a little bit ancient. Maybe, let, let's be in benefit. Let's say I said 2019. That was a level of personalization that you could do. And you're, and you're focusing on the, the, the role and the context towards that role. But right now, what we want, we want to make sure you know something that we don't know and you're bringing something to us that we have never thought about before. And it's important that when you're doing that type of research that you're not wasting hours and hours. So this is what HubSpot has figured. They're using AI to help them in that process. Let me give you an example. So with all of their inbound leads at, uh, at, at HubSpot, they're, they're, they're doing research on that particular prospect beforehand or getting information about their business and about the challenges that it could be facing so that they can send an email that is tailored towards that individual. By doing that simple change, their conversion rate is now an 86%. By, go again, by doing that change, by having AI prepare an email, focus personalize on that organization because of the information it gathered and because of that role and that individual per se, because they've personalized those emails towards those people, they're seeing their conversion rate as an 86%. That's amazing because that is what we need to use AI for. It needs to be able to work in our favor to do work that we don't necessarily need to do, or it's going to take hours for us, hours for us to do. So I'm pumped and blown away by that by number two. But number three, number three is probably one of my favorites. And the reason is for many different purposes. But number three, simply put, HubSpot has discovered that more and more of our buyers are spending more time on social. The social media platforms are trying to keep them as much as possible because, I mean, that's how they make money. And they're discovering better ways to trap us on their platform, whether it's videos or whether it's uh, uh, putting up you know, content that's relative towards us, tailoring and, and focusing towards our needs and our behaviors. They're using AI to see how we're doing in predictive uh, ways that, you know, what we would want. So because of that, we can discover our prospects are spending more and more time on social. Now, that's not a bad thing. It, it may be challenging more so for your companies that may, uh, you know, perhaps you're, you're trying to use, uh, you know, post pieces of content on the platform and it's not like a directory anymore where you post a blog and all of a sudden people are going to come back to your website and so forth. But they're going to penalize essentially the, the, the user. Um, and if you're posting things like that, you see that you're dec those posts have decreased capabilities. They're not getting the, as much reach as in the past, in yonder years. So what you need to realize is if they're trying to keep more and more of your buyers on platforms, on their platform, without, um, and not let them come over to you as easily, there's a win here for us. We just need to double down on the content that we're producing on the platform. Just learn the game, right? But here's how we get around it. If a platform like LinkedIn is pushing videos, you better go ahead and start recording more of those videos because you're, they're feeding more of that to your prospects. And the more engaging you can make those videos, chat GPT, figure out what people are looking for, the more the, the increased chances are of people watching your stuff and then organically going back to your website or coming back to your LinkedIn profile and connecting with you and engaging with you. And then you can start more conversation with those people. Since people want to have a personalized experience, I'm telling you, homie, go on to LinkedIn and to utilize it. And if you want to get help on how to master LinkedIn, go to our LinkedIn prospecting course. You can find it via the link down below. And it should pop up on the screen there, the salesevangelist.com slash LinkedIn. We have a new cohort starting up soon. We'd love to have you. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash LinkedIn. But the key here is that we're building relationships with our prospects where they're spending time the most on LinkedIn, utilizing chat GPT and some of the AI capabilities to be able to help us. And HubSpot is leading the way with that. And I'm telling you, man, it is important that you take advantage of it. Go ahead and find the details about that in the show notes. As always, listen, I want you to thrive and succeed. I hope this is able to give you some insights. If you've never been to Inbound before, get yourself tied up and ready for next year. It's going to be amazing. Actually, they're taking it to San Francisco, uh, but I can't wait. Um, and then the last bonus thing I'll tell you, man, tie back to number three is content. I got a chance to meet with some amazing content creators. And one of the things that we're seeing is that these people are getting so much attention um, in their industry being big fish in small ponds because they're the ones that are becoming the watering hole. They're providing the information that their customers want to get. And you don't have to be a big influencer. You can just be a tiny influencer in the uh, Michigan manufacturing space. Um, that is totally possible. So anyways, I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. The three things again, one, search is decreasing. Two, personalize using AI. Three, 
social media, social media, social media. I uh, can't wait to hear about your experience if you've been to, been to Inbound. And if you are curious about more of this stuff and want to get more details, go ahead and ping me. You can find me at on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly, Donald C. Kelly, or you can go to our website, thesalesevangelist.com. Can't wait to connect with you and to have you join us. Look forward to hearing from you. As always, raise the level of thinking, go out and do big things. Mm-hmm.